Allez, Gaulle, bonjour. Comment ça va How are you people Well, bon, comme vous les savez, je m'appelle Dananja Dondial et je suis un professeur de français. As you know, my name is Dananja Dondial and I am a French teacher. Et je viens de l'institut qui s'appelle Unique Institute of Foreign Languages. And I come from the institute, the name of which is Unique Institute of Foreign Languages. C'est situé à Dérardon en Inde. It is situated in Dérardon in India. Et je fais les vidéos de la langue français pour les, pour les gens qui veulent apprendre français. And I am making video for all those people who want to learn French language. Si vous voulez l'entendre, l'entendre, alors je suis, euh, je suis là pour vous. And if you are one of them, well, I am there for you. Alors, dans mes pri euh, premières vidéos, je vous ai déjà enseigné plusieurs choses. In my previous videos, I have already taught you so many things. Par exemple, on a déjà fait l'alphabet. For example, we have already done the alphabets. On a fait euh, les articles définis, les articles indéfinis. We have done the definite articles and indefinite articles. Et plusieurs autres choses, and many other things as well. Et aujourd'hui, on va prendre on va prendre une chose qui est vraiment très important. And today we are going to take up uh, I mean a thing which is really very important. Et est-ce que vous savez ça c'est quoi? And do you know what is that? Ça c'est les règles de phonétique. Les règles de phonétique. Ça veut dire quoi? The rules of phonetics. C'est une chose vraiment très importante pour les personnes qui veulent apprendre le français et qui veulent apprendre comment Uh, comment c'est les mots de français uh, prononcés. This is really very important topic for all those who are really interested in learning how French words are spoken, how French language is spoken. Sans, uh, sans uh, savoir ces règles, vous ne pouvez pas parler, vous ne pouvez pas prononcer les mots français exactement comme ils font, comme ils font. Without these rules, or without knowing these rules, you cannot actually understand or you cannot actually speak French the way French people actually do. Alors, alors, euh, va, euh, allez avec moi, et ça c'est quoi les règles de phonétique Les règles de phonétique, alors je l'ai écrit en hindi aussi pour, euh, pour les étudiants qui, qui viennent Uh, qui viennent uh, d'Inde et qui, qui, qui parlent hindi aussi. This is for those people who come from individual background from India. So I have written in Hindi for them also, just to facilitate them. In English, le means the, règle means rules, the means of, and phonetic, that means, you know, phonetic or sound or pronunciation. So the rules of sound, the rules of pronunciation, how this language will be pronounced. Well, I want to tell you all the languages in the world are classified into two groups based on their pronunciation. The first group is called the phonetic based group and the second group is called the diphthong based group. Under the first group, all the languages are written and spoken in the same manner. So, there is no hidden sound nor is there any alphabet silent. Like Hindi, Sanskrit, Spanish, Italian, etc. These languages come under the group of the phonetic based languages. For example, in Hindi or in Sanskrit, if I say Hare Krishna, write down. So whatever I spoke, you will write down everything in the same manner like Ha, Ra, E, K, R, Sh, N. So nothing is left with all that I pronounced, you have written it. So Writing pattern and write, uh, speaking pattern is same. Like, let's take the example of Spanish. You know, Spanish people will read it the way it is written. How na tu re. Although the meaning is same, but the pronunciation is na tu re. They will read it as pu tu re. So why? Because this is the phonetic based language. We are supposed to speak it the way it is written. Well, I hope this concept is clear to you. And if it is so, then let's move to the next topic, 
and what is that? Diphthong based languages. But before we proceed ahead with diphthong based languages, we must know what do we mean by diphthong. As long as we don't know diphthong, we cannot understand the rest part. So I will tell you, diphthong is a particular sound. It's a peculiar sound, it's a particular sound which originates out of the combination of two or more vowels or consonants or vowel consonants. So when two or more vowels or consonants or vowel consonants sometimes, you know, come together to give rise to a particular sound, well that particular sound is called as diphthong. To understand it better, I will give you certain examples. But before that, I want to tell you the language which you are going to learn, which is French language, of course, is not a phonetic based language. It is a diphthong based language. So without knowing French diphthongs, how are you going to speak this language? So, on va le comprendre avec quelques exemples. We are going to understand it by some examples. Par exemple, O and U. These are the two vowels. And when these two vowels come together, they give rise to a particular sound. What is that? O. And let us come to know how we can use it. Like S O U S. Now we, this is a French word, and we want to read it. So this is sa, and O U gives U sound. You have just come to know. So this is sa plus U su. And I have already taught you in my previous videos that in French the last consonant is mute. So this is su altogether, which means under. I hope you have understood. If not, you can signify your not understanding through your comments in the comment box. This is V O U S. So this is VA and O U gives U sound and the last consonant is mu. So how will you read it? VU. VU. VU means U. So like U. And if you have really understood my point, then you will have to express your understanding by answering my questions, which are what? N O U S, how will you read it? T O U S, Z O U R, T O U R. These are the questions for you. And tell me through your comment box, you know, in the comment box, how will you pronounce them? Their meaning is we, all, they, and for. So I will see your, you know, whether you are really understanding me or not by your answer. So I hope the first diphthong, French diphthong, you have understood. And now let us come to the second diphthong, that is A and N. Here it is a combination of what? One vowel and one consonant. A is a vowel, N is a consonant. And they together give rise to a sound which is called AN. AN. So here D A N S. In French, there is no DA sound, there is no TA sound. We have got soft notes in French language. So DA and A N gives AN sound. So DA plus AN together give DON. And the last consonant is mute. So DON. Dom means in or inside. So S A N S. How will you pronounce this word? That is your job to tell me the next time. Which means without. Coming to the next diphthong, this is E and N. Again, there is one vowel and one consonant, and they give again all sound. So A N and E N both give same sound. Don't get confused. So E N T R E. So this is on. This is the, this is the, and in my previous videos I have taught you last E is always mute in French. So you will just write it, but you won't pronounce it. So entre, entre. But R, in my first video I taught you in French the original sound of R is as if you are gargling, something like this. So it is what? Entre, and then R is R. So if you hear this word, you know. To be pronounced by original French, he will read it like entre, not entre, entre. Ha, ha, ha. You know, be careful. Okay, entre. That means in between. So if you have understood my point, then you will have to tell this word how to pronounce it. Come on. So comment box, of course. You have lots of work to do. Then say ours. Here it's a combination of two consonants, and they give. Together, sh sound, sh like say r o u x, c h o u x. In French, how do you say? Say r o u x. You have to learn the French alphabet, and I hope you must have done it by now. So this is sh, and o u. I have just told you o u gives u sound. So sh 
plus O U O and the last component is mu. So how do you read it? Shu and shoots that is cabbage. Cabbage, yeah, vegetable, you know. So if you have really understood my point, then you will have to tell me how will you read this? Say R R N T O F. How will you tell me? Of course, through comment box, yes. That means to sing. Okay. Then the next one. A U. En français alors on le prononce A U, but in English it is A U, and they together give rise to O sound, like say R A U D. So this is sh. You have just learned it out from here. A U gives O sound. I just told you. The sh plus O O is a matra, and the last consonant is mu. So I will read it. Show. Show means hot. Hot. It fait très chaud aujourd'hui. C'est le mois de juin. On end alors euh, on été il fait très chaud. This is the month of Jan June and in the summer season here in India it fait très chaud. It's very hot here. Chaud, chaud, hot. Okay, so this is for you. A U T R E. How you read it? Well, that's your job to tell me. It means other or another, and I hope you will do it. The next diphthong is A I. Together give rise to the sound A, C H A I S E. So this is sh, and A I gives A sound. So A is a matra in Hindi like this, and S coming in between vowel gives z sound. This point I have already taught you in my first video. So it is z, and the last e is always mute in French. So this is all together sh plus A sh, and z sh is last is mute. Sh is means chair. O N, one vowel, one consonant, always give rise to the sound on. M A I S O N. So M is ma. A I gives A sound. You know this from here. So it is a matra in Hindi like this. S coming in between vowels, so it will give a sound. And O N I have taught you. This is on. So all together it is mejon. If you compose all the syllables together, it will give sound mejon. Mejon means house. Hey, une maison ici à Dehradun. I have a house here in Dehradun. Est-ce que vous avez une maison ici à Dehradun? Do you have a house here in Dehradun? Non. Si vous m'avez compris, alors vous devez me répondre comment on le prononce en français. S A I S O N. If you have really understood me, then you will have to tell me how will you pronounce this word in French, which means season. I know you'll do it. Je sais que vous, que vous allez me répondre bien sûr. I know that you are going to respond me very, you know, uh, certainly. The next diphthong is e a u. E a u all together give sound like o o. B b e a u b e a u b e a u b it gives b sound. E a u gives o sound. All together b plus o together give rise to the sound o. Et on bien si beau, beau c'est qui ça? Monsieur Daniel Dondial, beau, beau veut dire quoi? Handsome. Oh, uh, juste plaisant. I'm just kidding. Beau means handsome or beautiful. Votre professeur de français qui s'appelle Daniel Dondial est très beau. C'est juste pour les autres. Your French teacher is très beau. Okay, c'est juste plaisant. If you have really understood me, then you will tell me how will you read this word. Which means hat, and this, which means boat or ship, or this one, which means overcoat or winter coat. That's your job. C'est votre boulot de le faire. This is your job to do. And then the next one is O I together give rise to sound wa. So this is O I S E A U. O I gives wa sound. S coming in between vowel gives z sound, and E A U. You have just learned that it gives o sound. So all the syllables together give rise to the sound wa zo. Which means verb, wazo. And then this is your job, b o i b r e. Well, how will you pronounce it? It means pepper, curry mirch. And this is to see. So all this is your job. In my next video, I will, you know, I, I will explain you if you are not able to do it. But I know you are able to do it. And the last for this, we don't have the, uh, you know, this much of uh, diphthongs, the French diphthongs. We have got many more. But in this video, uh, I just give you like ten diphthongs for you to learn. In next video, we will go ahead with the rest. 
In French, G N always gives a near sound. Near. So like S I G N. So this is S is S. In French, I gives E sound. So S plus E is a matra, and G N gives a near sound. Senior. Senior. The meaning is uh, of course sign. Sometimes you will find in French and in English certain words their spellings and meanings are same. Only they are different in the way they are pronounced. Like this one, the spelling and meaning are same, but the pronunciation is in English it is sign, and here in French it is senior. I told you in French I gives e sound. So if you have understood the point, this is your job. How do you read it? How do you read it? You know, this is signal, same meaning, and this is. You know how do you read it? Your job. It means countryside or outskirts, the outer area of. So that is this word in French. Bon, alors j'espère que que vous avez vous avez vous profité avec euh, avec moi euh, dans ma classe de français. I hope you must have enjoyed in my French class. Et si oui, alors vous pouvez vous pouvez le partager. And yes, then you can. Share it, and you know I have got many, many other videos also. You can see them also for getting you know more ideas, and um, I have my phone number also. So if not, then you can call me up also. I give online classes as well. Thank you very much. Au revoir. A bientôt.